Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this flash webinar on anti-racism curriculum to promote diversity, equity, inclusion, and healthcare education, an online module with workshops for learners, faculty, and staff. And I'm Barbara Lewis. I'm going to be talking about this grant very briefly today. We really appreciate your joining us here. So we have three principal investigators with this grant that have been working on the grant for three years, <clears throat> Dennis Novak, Camille Burnett, and Leon McRae. And we're so fortunate that Dr. Camille Burnett is with us today. And let me turn it over to Camille. Great, thank you, Barbara. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. We are so thrilled that you're here to learn a little bit more at a very quick high level flyover of our module. Um, we recognize that this has just been a lifelong um, passion for many of us and many of you here. And it's really important that we are able to have a resource um, such as this for our faculty, for our students, for each one of us, so that we can be really well positioned and ideally positioned to make the changes that our communities deserve and all of us um, should expect. And so with that, because we only have 20 minutes, <laughs> I'm gonna pass it back to Barbara and we will try our best to answer questions in real time for you um, in the chat. And do not despair. If we don't get to your questions, we will have a collective response that will go out by email. So with that, welcome. So happy to have all of you here. And I hope you're as excited to hear about the module as we are excited to bring it to you. So with that, thanks. And back to you, Barbara. Thank you, Camille. So let me just briefly tell you about our grant goals and the application that we submitted to Macy it was to educate healthcare trainees about structural, cultural, and individual racism, to create an anti-racism learning and an anti-racist learning environment, to deepen self-awareness and reflection, and to advocate for positive changes in institutions and communities that will lead to equitable care for all. So we had over 65 individuals who volunteered to work on the grant with us and representing uh, 20 institutions and over five disciplines. We we're very fortunate that all these people came forward to work on this grant because as you can imagine, or you'll see in this short uh, webinar, how much, many resources that we actually have. So each of the- uh, Barbara, sorry, can you share your screen please? Oh, I am so sorry. I'm so glad that you told me. I thought I was doing that. Okay, let's just back up here for a moment. Thank you for bringing that up. So these are the grant goal, principal investigators, grant goals, participants, the four groups. And uh, so each person selected a group. One was the module to write the content and that one Camille headed up. Then we had a curriculum group that developed the guides for faculty and students. An assessment group created evaluations for the modules and a faculty development group produced a faculty workshop. So originally Camille's group had quite a conversation about what should be included because as you can imagine, this is a huge topic. And we finally settled on these 17 different sections of what should be included in the module content. It includes 20,000 words, that's without references, pre and post tests, 30 exercises, and 38 videos. The curriculum guide has eight guides, and then an interprofessional one is threaded throughout. Each of the guides is about 60 minutes. There's a pre and post test for assessment. The uh, faculty guide has the preparation, the introduction, the rules and discussion, and then we also have a student guide as well. The assessment and educational research group did an environmental scan uh, originally of what is out there, created an OSCE, which has been used already, and also developed a learning environment survey, which you can find on the website. The faculty development group uh, went on to develop a 58 slide deck. And then I am now currently turning that deck into three one hour asynchronous workshops that will be videotaped that people can easily access. 
And then finally, uh, the faculty development group also did two workshops, one at Drexel University and the other for the pilot programs. One was a two hour workshop and the other was a three hour workshop. So we're doing pre and post tests and all of the workshops and taking a look at what people think about the workshops and the material. And what we discovered is the feedback from the faculty development group. The faculty actually liked the content and were interested in continuing to learn two things. One was Brave Spaces and the other one was the Privilege Wheel. So the three asynchronous workshops that we have are on, uh, one is on why people have biases. The other one is, the second one is on discussing st structural factors. And the third one is on creating brave spaces. We have currently 12 pilot institutions that have been using the module since last year. And I am working with each one of them on this. At the beginning, we went out to the pilot institutions and said, okay, we've got this resource. And um, people said, well, we don't wanna take this out first to the students for curriculum and orientation. What we really need to do is we need to educate the faculty. And that has been confirmed by a number of people with whom I have spoken that the faculty can't take this out to the students until the faculty have been trained. And we're looking at re-education, otherwise known as remediation, workshop, and onboarding. And then we had one pilot school said, well, if we're training the faculty, we have to train the staff. And oh, by the way, let's get the training out to our clinicians and residents as well. So these are our four areas that the module is appropriate for. So I was talking to one school and the woman said, this is just a fantastic uh, amount of resources, but there's so much of it. I just don't know what I can do, how to, in, how to in, um, incorporate it into my curriculum. So what I did is I developed this plan where you can submit to me a syllabus, a PowerPoint, or a case study, and then I will review and match that with the anti-racism resources, and then I'll send you the recommendations. So for example, here is something that somebody sent me. This was a PowerPoint presentation. Here are the PowerPoint slides that I picked out. Number 10 is historical definitions. And I said, oh, that's perfect for our section on medicine and the myth of race. And here's an eight and a half minute video that we could use. Or another video is um, a Black Man in America. And here are some discussion questions. So now what we've developed is a, an Excel spreadsheet that discusses or that are, has all of the sections. These are all the sections. It has an overview of each section so that you can just easily look at the um, various uh, sections and see exactly what it's about. And then finally, a video, who is the acting in the video, the minutes involved, if there's any external links, and we have a lot of videos that are linked to uh, for example, um, YouTube, you can see that. And then we also have discussion questions as well that you can use. So let me go back to the PowerPoint. And okay, so now let's take a, a, a little tour. And we do have something in the chat. Let me just, oh, amazing work. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, a labor of love for three years. This has been going on over three years, probably now, considering the application. Okay, and so here is the link, and I'm going to put this in the chat, which is the URL, which you can follow along if you want, or at least you'll have it. So this is free to everyone everywhere in the world in perpetuity. Thank you to the Macy Foundation for supporting this. So you'll come to this page and then you can click on the anti-racism in healthcare. This brings up the module and uh, it has uh, all of these sections, the difference, the 17 sections, each one of them 
has a welcome, the learning goals, and ha has many of the same uh, topics in each one of them. Let's just take a look at one of them. So this is the microaggression one. Originally, this video was a 60 minute video, a conversation between Leon McRae, one of the PIs, and uh, a student at the time who's now a resident, Will Justice. And the stories that Will Justice told were so impactful that what we decided to do is instead of keeping it intact as a 60 minute video, what we would do is take out little snippets and put them in front of each of the different modules. If he's talking about discrimination or, or advocacy or whatever it may be. So nearly all of the sections now have these snippets and people have told me about watching these and how impactful it has been to them. So for example, on one of the videos, he discusses the fact that he walks into the hospital with his other with the other students, and he is the only one who signaled out to um, separated from everybody else to show his his badge. And one faculty member I was talking to, she said that was so impactful to me. I never thought about it. And now every time I walk through security, I think about that story. And these stories are incredible that, that he tells. So we have the content here. And then we have um, with our other PI, Dennis Novak, uh, an example of a microaggression. And in this case, he comes into the room and he asks the woman to clear the tray. And she tells him that she is a resident and um, on the team. And then they all give their different perspectives. And these are unscripted and they're from the heart. And it's uh, really, really quite impactful, I think. And then here's Dennis um, ready to give his apology to the woman. So we also have within the um, module, we have other videos and then we have discussion questions that you can go to and um, easily um, ask your learners or incorporate them in your curricula, your PowerPoint or anything else. So let me just pause there and see if there are any questions. If you want to unmute yourself, or um, I did speed through this. <laughs> so if you have any questions or anything that you want to ask about the module. There's a couple in the chat, um, okay. Barbara, and one was a suggestion around perhaps using AI to do some of the matching with the content. I think that's a great idea. Perhaps yeah. we can explore that in the future versus you, you know, going through and doing that. So um, that was one. And the other one is asking about a colleague in terms of who can their colleague contact to make a request for the um, recording. So that would be oh. me. And let me put my address in the chat. I don't think it's on the, the PowerPoint. The recording will be available to everybody, but if you want to get in touch with me to help you, and yes, I am using AI. Yeah, so oftentimes I'm just putting in the syllabus into AI and then asking the question about anti-racism, and then it's spitting out actually what can be done. So yes, that is saving a lot of work. Well, there you go. I didn't even realize that we were doing that. So great. I'm glad you answered that. Kristen is asking how long does it take through to how long does it take to go through all of the modules? So it could take if you're doing all 17, it could take hours. I mean, it does it is um, very comprehensive and can take a long time. But what we're finding is that most people are picking different sections and assigning them. So it varies, but the sections are not that long. It's 20,000 words altogether, but that's 17 sections or 18, including the epilogue. So uh, the reading is not that um, extensive. The 
videos would be, but it depends on how much you assign. And what we're finding is that with all these different sections, that people are looking at their curricula and deciding on specific sections that they want to use to um, incorporate into whether it's a PowerPoint, a case study, or into their syllabi, actually. Hi, can I just say a quick word? Sure. So this is Dennis Novak. He is the actual yeah. person who I'm, a, I'm, a, who, I'm a co PI. But, no, well, uh, no, but you were the the person who actually came up with this idea and and submitted the application and did the uh, grant and everything. There's my uh, I'm doing I'm doing a, a puzzle with my four year old granddaughter. Cinderella. Uh, uh, okay, great, sweetie. Hold on a sec. Uh, uh, I just wanted to mention our. Um, uh, uh, our uh, facilitator notes for eight workshops that are keyed uh, to different sections uh, uh, of this module, and the uh, eight workshops um, uh, are pretty are pretty complete with instructions on how to create safe, brave spaces, uh, uh, what what homework mm -hmm. students have to do ahead of time, uh, uh, small you know div dividing up into small groups, suggested role plays, and stuff like that. So uh, uh, the uh, the workshop syllabus is um, is uh, on the front page, uh, and that's another way of going through the module is to assign different workshops, uh, and the workshops tend to be an hour to two hours. Okay, sorry, I got to get back to my uh, <laughs> your puzzle. My puzzle. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so those workshops can really help a lot in incorporating the um, the this content into what you might have already what's existing. So is it transferable to other countries? I would say absolutely it is. It uh, It's anti-racism and racism goes on all over the world, unfortunately, among all different races. So yes, I definitely think it, it is applicable. And I just want to add that there's a section specifically in the module that is US history based. So I think for that segment, that might be an area that, you know, is very specific um, countrywide. However, if you think through some of the theories around colonialism and intersectionality and structural racism, those are widely applicable across country contexts. So I just wanted to add that too. Yes, thank you. And it is a uh, equally applicable to everyone, to all learners. And uh, faculty really should be schooled first in this because it's very difficult for them to take it out to the students without knowing this and without having the background and gone through some of these sections. And that was tested by one of our pilot schools who took information, not this particular module, but took some information out to the uh, students by the faculty and it was a, a terrible failure because the faculty weren't did not know the information about the anti-racism and all the things that they were discussing so yes it's very important for everyone i think to learn this so can you clarify a bit options are to take the modules as they are or to serve as a facilitator of a workshop so so you can be a faculty member and use this certainly with learn with any kind of learners and attending, or you can have a train the trainer module model rather where you're using this with everyone, or you we're having an asynchronous workshop at some point which people can do on their own and that is in construction right now. I hope it will be done shortly. I hope that answered your question, Lisa, but if not, feel free to unmute yourself and tell me. The discussion questions. Uh, hmm. I, I, what browser are you using that we need to know that? So if there's an issue, we can test it. I couldn't get it to work on Firefox. Chrome seems to be working. Oh, okay. Okay. And good to know. Thank you for that. Where is it? The syllabus is at the top of the module. So when you are here, I'll show my screen again. You are here and you go to the anti-racism module. Here it is right here, curriculum guide. 
And now if you scroll down to the resources down here, we have the overview, which is a Word document. Then we have the learning environment questionnaire. And we also have the um, anti-racism videos discussion question guide. That was the Excel spreadsheet that I told you about. And this is a newsletter that uh, some students have put together as well, which you may be interested in. And let me go back to the chat and see what else is happening. Okay, the syllabus. Okay, that was, so the curriculum guide is the, that's the one that I just showed. And that's at the top of the module. Okay. So uh, the OSCE is, is something that is not available for everyone. That was developed by the group though. And Elizabeth, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you're very familiar with the OSCE. Do you just want to mention how the OSCE is being used? You can I unmute yourself. I think I did. Okay, yep. Okay, yeah, I have to uh, have somebody work here today, so that's why I'm on the speakerphone. So um, the OSCE was, it's actually an OSCE station that addresses allyship and that uh, focuses on skills related to calling in. Maybe you're familiar with uh, the TED Talk by uh, uh, Loretta Ross and uh, the Harvard Guide on calling in versus calling out. It's a skill to first develop a rapport before you discuss somebody who made microaggressions or who um, behaved in a way that was not uh, appropriate. So uh, the OSCE station is uh, currently used with third year medical students who are entering a clerkship in psychiatry. It's an eight station OSCE and this is one of the stations. Uh, the learners first have an opportunity to watch a 30 second video that um, illustrates uh, the microaggression that is um, um, done against a colleague, a, a co-student, another student, a fellow student. And then they have to go into the station and discuss this with a um, ward clerk, we maybe the ward clerk who, uh, who uh, committed this uh, microaggression. Um, there's a lot of uh, debrief. There's a two minute, uh, the encounter lasts 10 minutes after Eight minutes it stops and the standardized participant, the standardized patient who portrays a ward clerk is giving feedback, individual feedback. And then there is feedback also in the debriefing. There's a 30 minute debriefing attached to that station where they uh, all discuss you know, what happened and how can they implement a better strategy to be an ally. Thank you, Elizabeth. So I see that we are at time and people are uh, jumping off now, but uh, I will stick around if anybody else has any more questions. But thank you so much for joining us today. This is a free resource. It's uh, tremendous and a lot of work went into this and I think that you'll find it uh, very useful for any of your learners, whether they are students, residents or faculty staff or clinicians. Thank you so much.